Hey, hi, Kelsey. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, fantastic. Awesome. So we have a few questions uh, from the area of expertise and experience uh, that you are having. So let's start the rapid fire kind of. So what does platform engineering mean to you? It means marketing. So outside of the words, there's actually work that you get done. You can call it system administration. You can call it DevOps. You can call it platform engineering. But there's work to be done. Whatever the platform you have, if it's Linux, all the things you add to make Linux useful. If it's Kubernetes, all the things you add to make Kubernetes useful. And even if you're using something serverless, you still probably got to add something to make it useful. So whatever the something you add, that's platform engineering. I'm so glad that somebody's saying it. Let's let's take a step back and say that what is a technical pla technology driven platform for you? A technology driven platform. Because that's what we are dealing with. I mean, look, I've been involved in the Kubernetes community for many years. And when I saw Kubernetes, it was a technology driven platform, meaning all the things we used to do, Kubernetes gave us a way to serialize it into a piece of technology. So if you pick nodes to run on based on the memory size, instead of doing it on a spreadsheet or in a YAML file for Ansible, you can finally just let the scheduler do it for you. And if something was missing, like, I don't know, some security profile and checks before things actually run, you can just use Kubernetes and mission controllers to make it happen. So in my career, I think Kubernetes was probably one of the first technology driven because of all this extensions, its APIs, its plugin, to finally give us a thing that no matter what ideas we had, whether we're using containers or building something like Istio for networking, we had a technology platform in which to push everything down towards. So that's an interesting view. And uh, we standing here in Cloud Native, that's the one good example. But does that mean every abstraction is a platform? No, this is why I'm saying that I think for me, platform is just this platform engineer is a marketing term because what do the words actually mean? I define this by the work we do. Right, so when do platform engineers show up? Is when the thing that we buy needs to have something added to it before it works. For example, Salesforce is a platform and most people just use it without adding anything. For that case, you are not a platform engineer. You're just using Salesforce as it is. When I use Gmail, I don't do any engineering to Gmail. Therefore, I just use that platform as it is. If I were to extend Gmail, or I go and extend Salesforce, a lot of those people that do full-time consultancy around Salesforce, I would consider them platform engineering. They're engineering on top of this platform called Salesforce. So to me, I define this whole space based on the work we do. And the thing underneath, that's the technical implementation of various platforms, right? So we're in the software business. When we build things that are repeatable and reusable, our tools in many ways become platforms because of the ability to extend them and build on top. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so we hear this term a lot, uh, especially maybe uh, maybe with respect to marketing or maybe to actually condition the term, the IDPs, the internal developer platform, that this is something which is a big part of the platform engineering space. And we have seen the evolution uh, of some of the toolings that help you build the internal developer platforms. So at KubeCon over the past couple of years where we have seen this term grow, what do you think uh, in your terms is IDP heading? Like I know people who are doing IDP before it was even a term. Uh, so it's just now a term. And what are the tools you think has evolved and where uh, the industry is kind of heading to in building IDPs? Or is it something still a marketing thing and uh, people are just enabling the tools that for easing out the things that they were doing before? Again, another marketing term. We see this in the real world. There's things called public transportation. It's literally just transportation. The, what makes it public transportation is how it's funded who is it meant to be used for? And there's a lot of ideas around it, including all the politics involved. So we use very specific terms to describe that mode of transportation, public transportation. It's very different than ride sharing, which is its own segment of transportation. In all of those situations, there's some vehicle picking people up and taking them somewhere. So when we say IDP, we're describing things that have already existed, but with a new set of vocabulary. Internal developer platform. Now we want to start thinking about the things that we give developers, their exact tooling. For some people, the first IDP they've ever interacted with was called Jira, right? There's this thing where you can track issues, you can use Confluence to find documentation, you can click on another button to start chatting in real time. For many people, that was their internal developer platform for deciding on what the work is and tracking it amongst each other. 
And then there's some people that believe that an internal developer platform should be somewhere where you discover other things from each other. Hey, is there an API that does something so I don't have to write it again? And so some people used to put that in Confluence as, as a doc. Some people don't read the doc. And now we're moving into something that's a bit more interactive and we give it names like Backstage, just like we gave distributed systems a name called Kubernetes. It's just a label. And so will it pick up and continue? Yes, it was already here. We just gave it a name so that we can all talk about it in the same way. So yes, it's a marketing term to describe something that more of us should be doing or a pattern of doing something. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a thing that will survive, but I'm hoping we get past the marketing and more of the work. Yeah, so uh, what according to you is one of the existing biggest challenges in the uh, plat whole platform engineering space that we should focus on? Finishing what you start, very simple. There's a million people that have OpenShift PLC, they have Kubernetes PLC, they have Lambda PLC. Everything is halfway. No metrics, no logging. We've, we've known to do metrics and logging for 20 years. Most people still don't have CI CD pipeline. They start it, but never finish. So the hardest thing is to say, hey, I see something that we want to do. The starting point is some PLC, a little trial, a little experimentation. The finishing is when it get hard, right? You run into a few errors. You run into things that it doesn't do. Now you need to do some platform engineering to make it work. The vendor told you that it was ready to go, production ready. They show you all the logos. Everybody is using. All you have to do is add your name. And then you get it and you find out it doesn't do everything. Now you have to do some work. That is the hardest part because there are so many success stories. But when you really break down the success stories, it's because they actually finished the work. They didn't buy the perfect product. They made that thing work for themselves. So to me, that is the number one thing. Finish what you start. And if you can't do that, then go get some help. Anything last thing you want to share with us or want to convey our people out there? Uh, finish what you start. <laughs> finish what you start. Yeah. And maybe do the thing holistically. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Awesome. Nice talking to you.